Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. As you know, Ukraine is experiencing pretty severe power outages at the moment. We are trying hard to still release new episodes daily, but in case we won't be able to do so, be assured that we will return as soon as possible and stay with us. Your support helps us to get through these hard times. My name is Artem and here is the news. 274 days less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Yesterday Ukraine marked 9 months since the start of the full-scale Russian invasion. President Volodymyr Zelensky in his video address stressed that Russia hasn't found a way to break Ukrainians and will not find it. He called on people of Ukraine to continue to hold on like this in the future, in unity and helping each other. Power outages caused by the latest Russian missile attack continued in Ukraine. For example, in Kyiv, the majority of residents remained without electricity, water supply, heating and mobile communication since 6.30 am on 24th of November until early morning the next day. Businesses that didn't have power generators were not working. In his evening video address, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky informed that restoration continued all day yesterday and electricity, heat, water supply and communication are gradually restored. But there still were problems in 15 regions, including Kyiv. The president said that energy workers, utility workers, businesses, everyone is doing their part to give light again. This is truly a nationwide task. Ukraine is working as unitedly as possible in this, said the president. He informed that recently announced points of invincibility are already working in cities that remain without electricity for more than 12 hours. These are places with generators, heating, water and internet. Zelensky called on Ukrainians to provide help to single or elderly people who need it. Volodymyr Zelensky informed that he held another meeting of the staff. The participants discussed energy and communication issues. For example, measures to protect Ukraine's energy system from new Russian strikes, restoration work and the supply of equipment and the involvement of specialists. According to the president, special attention was paid to the communication system. He informed that the situation on the front line is complicated as well, but no matter how difficult it may be, armed forces of Ukraine are holding the key frontiers in all directions. They are even prepared to advance in some areas, said Delansky. Yesterday, Russian forces conducted an attack on a residential neighborhood in the city of Kherson with multiple launch rocket systems, reports Ukrainska Pravda. At the moment, it is known about seven civilians killed and other 21 sustained injuries. The president of Ukraine reacted, saying that almost every hour he receives reports of strikes by the occupiers at Kherson and other communities of the region. He pointed out that this terror began immediately after the Russian army was forced to flee from this part of the region. Zelensky called it revenge of those who lost as they do not know how to fight, the only thing they can still do is terrorize. He stressed that it is only the liberation of Ukraine's land and reliable security guarantees for Ukraine that can protect its people from any Russian escalations. The UK Defense Secretary Ben Wallace advised the Ukrainian army to maintain the dynamics of the offensive in the winter period, using its advantage over the enemy, reports RBK Ukraine. In an interview with the Daily Beast, the Defense Secretary pointed out the advantage that the Ukrainians have in training, technique and quality of personnel over the demoralized, poorly trained and poorly equipped Russians. According to Wallace, the armed forces of Ukraine received 300,000 sets of winter clothing from the international community, which are an essential requirement for the winter offensive. Quote, a Russian unit was recently deployed with no food, no socks and few weapons. It's disastrous for a man going into the field. The Russians have the scale, but they are not very good. Well, most of the good ones are dead. Unquote. Director of the International Commission on Missing Persons, Matthew Holiday, said that more than 15,000 people went missing during the Russian invasion of Ukraine, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to Holiday, the figure of 15,000 is conservative, considering that in Mariupol alone, according to the Ukrainian authorities, 25,000 people have died or gone missing. He believes that the process of investigating cases of missing persons in Ukraine will continue for years, even after the cessation of hostilities. Holiday also pointed out that the vast majority of the missing and dead are victims of war crimes, so the perpetrators must be brought to justice. If you like what we do and would like to tip us, you can now do so directly to our PayPal. Check out the link in the description to this episode for more details. 
And as usual, you can subscribe to our Patreon. In gratitude for your help, we will give you access to a series of exclusive episodes on wartime life in Ukraine. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.